Hey Disney, what's on this week's Mickey File podcast? On episode 118, they will be discussing Walt Disney World news, Christmas at Epcot, and an amazing new technological wonder that is coming to the Disney resorts. Plus some other stuff. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Mickey File Podcast. I am Scott, and with me tonight, my lovely wife, Karen. Hello, everybody. It's uh, the first week of December. I know. How's this, how'd this happen already? I don't know, because Christmas is, like, really close now. I know. Everything snuck up on us, and I'm just... I, I Actually, it doesn't even matter. Like, none of the family is going to be in town for Christmas. I know. So all the presents. I mean, like I, the immediate family. Yeah. So the ones I ordered here, thinking, okay, I'll just give them to them. Now I have to ship them. I'm like, Arr. like I feel like the bigger deal is that Star Cruiser is only like twenty six, twenty seven days away. Yes. So that's a little scary. That is terrifying. So I have two outfits. <laughs> uh, yeah. Third one's coming. Shortly, like Sunday. Yeah, right. And the girls all gave, they gave thumbs up on it. So it's just a question of whether it fits. I saw that. <laughs> so it looks like you'll be good for that. <laughs> I just don't know if three outfits is enough. 28th, 29th. So we're three days. I feel like you need like six outfits. I know, because I need daytime and nighttime. Right. I know. So I'm stressing about this. Because you can't wear like an outfit into the Bet. park and then wear it to fancy dinner that night exactly so so we have to brainstorm you and the girls i'm out of a discussion <laughs> <laughs> i've got my stuff it's all good uh, okay so yeah uh anyway so that's coming up the yep. 28th so yes we board I mean, basically four weeks i know but. we board on the 28th yeah so, and Exciting. we found anyway, and we found out some details. Like we already have our lightsaber training as the first night, because our data pad stuff showed up. Yeah, all that, all that showed up. I know shows our schedule. I still cannot order clothes from Shop Disney because apparently having to change my email address means my email address is no longer linked to the reservation. Oh, even though it shows up on my Disney Experience. Oh, yeah. It's almost like um, Disney IT didn't do a good job. Yeah. Mm, shocking. What? So, anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll get ready for that. I know. I'm so excited. And uh, let's see. Next Tuesday, which is the 6th? Yes. Yeah, the 6th. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be doing Mouse Quiz, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on YouTube, Facebook, all of that. Exciting. Do we know what the topics are yet? Disney. <gasps> what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, we don't have the specific topics finalized yet. Okay. Anyway. So we would love more and more people to come join us. We got prizes. We do have prizes. It's have, not for nothing. Yeah, it's actual prizes. Yeah. So, and, and we do we do have a shirt um, still available from Uli as well. We do have a Christmas shirt. Yes. Maybe that'll be this week's. I think that'll be this week's. Okay, there we go. So we'll have a Christmas shirt. Mm -hmm. December 6th for the winner. Yes. And I think some options. I don't think you get stuck with like the size and color that we just have. No, 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 no. You get, you get to choose whether it's red or green, and yep. you get to choose your size. And choose your size. Right. So, there you go. Yep. Um, okay. That's, I guess, housekeeping. So, why don't we start with news? All right. Hey, Disney. Amazon Assistant devices are being added to Walt Disney World Resorts. Polynesian is the first resort to get them. So does Polynesian, does that mean they already have them? I believe they are being installed this week. Yeah, that's kind of cool. They were sending notifications out, like slipping a thing under the door or whatever, saying that they will be entering their rooms. 
to put them in. Right. So. <laughs> Set them on a counter and plug them in. Well, they get, they're being it's put not, on the nightstand. But okay. still. I mean, it's not like it's. Well, instead of just regular. I mean, you know, housekeeping comes in. They're letting them know that a maintenance thing is coming in to install something. Right. So are they shows or. Basically, they're what we have in the little design thing, except it's the. I don't know if it's the 50th one or it's the Mickey Mouse case. On okay. It. But it's the Echo Show. It's the Echo Show 5. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I wonder if that means you'll be able to watch. I mean, I know it's a five inch screen. But like we can watch Hulu and stuff on ours. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I guess maybe somebody who's staying on property at Polly. I don't know if anybody that is. I just wonder. Yeah. Or do they have it, you know, limited like. Is it like a kid's account or? I cannot answer that. I mean, they've already changed the, what do they call it? The wake word for yeah. Disney. So, mm -hmm. which by the way, I mean, like, why do like the most blase wake word? Like, yeah. I, I get maybe you don't want to ask Jeannie because, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I get that. But like, hey, Mickey. Right. Mickey would have been better, hey. especially if you're putting the Mickey colors on it. Right. I mean, like, hey, you know, whatever. I don't know. It's a little weird, the Hey Disney thing. But, eh, whatever. Hey. It's still cool. I mean, like, once a week when I'm trying to turn the lights off to go to bed. I get a, did you know that you can have Shaq as Alexa's voice? And <laughs> so, like, seriously, like, they couldn't have gotten, you know, the guy that does Mickey or right. the guy that does Winnie the Pooh or. Something. Yeah. You know. I mean, the guy that does Mickey does Mickey. Why don't you do it in his voice? Yeah. And, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I. I'm I very dependent on our Alexas. We so. are. So when we didn't have, when we don't have power, it like I keep telling it to turn on, and it doesn't turn on. Well, I mean, we are because our lights and alarm Everything's are controlled by it. But I know. Dogs take off. A little. So anyway, I, no, I think it's going to be cool. I mean. I do think it's going to be. Is it going to be listening to you all the time? Yes. Is your phone already doing that? Yes. Yes. Right. Is your magic band is. Right. Like as an annual pass holder who, you know, and DVC members who get our discounts wherever we go, you better believe that Disney knows like they have a record somewhere of everything we've bought and eaten and. Oh, Yeah. You know, so I don't know. What's one more? Because 90% of it, we're using our AP discount or a DVC discount. They know. Yeah. Alexa hears everything in this house. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It just tried to listen to us now. <laughs> I know. So anyway, and I think it'll be cool. I mean, especially if it functions as an actual echo and right, you can get the weather and and you can get what time. The because if there is one thing I have learned about being in Disney groups, it's that nobody who goes to Disney actually has a weather app on their phone. Which is shocking. They are completely dependent on asking what people, what the weather will be like in three months on Facebook. And I'm pretty sure no one can tell you that. Yeah, but nobody apparently has a weather app on their phone. So if you have one, you know. If you can get up in the morning and hey Disney will tell you what the weather's gonna be, that should be a big help for people. I think it'll be a tremendous help for people. <laughs> All right, what else you got? Um, cocktail menus have been expanded to three restaurants at Magic Kingdom. Um, Cinderella's Royal Table, Be Our Guest, and Crystal Palace now have drinks other than beer and wine. 
Um, they, at Cinderella's Royal Table, they have a French 75, which is a gin based drink. Um, it's forged gin, lemon juice, pure sugar cane topped with Charles de Fer Reserve Chardonnay Brut. And then they also have a Bloody Mary, which everyone knows what's in a Bloody Mary. So, all right, so that French 75, which is also going to be, be our guest. Yep. And is for sure at uh, Enchanted Rose. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm sure other places. Right. Do they have breakfast at Cinderella's Royal Table? Yes, they do. Okay. So they have a Bloody Mary mm-hmm. for breakfast, which I assume they'll be selling all day, but I can't imagine drinking it at 8 o'clock at night. Like, that seems wrong. Right. Be Our Guest does not have breakfast. But they have the French 75 and a Bloody Mary. Right. And the Boulevardier. Yes. I guess. Which is Knob Creek Whiskey, Campari Liqueur, Sweet Vermouth, and Lexardo Cherries. So that's a Manhattan. Right. Um, okay. But I could see like Sunday, you know, Saturday or Sunday if you're doing a earlier lunch. Yeah, no, I get brunch. it. I, I mean, I get it. I just... I get it for the ones that that have breakfast or brunch. Yes. I don't really understand. I mean, okay, these are specialty cocktails, right? Yes. So I can still get a gin and tonic or right? No. It's That's the, it. it's I get these, one of these two. It's one of these two or beer and wine. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm way less excited about this than I was. Uh, Crystal Palace Mm -hmm. has a Bloody Mary. Yep. The Jack Rose, which is Laird's Applejack Brandy, Hibiscus Grenadine, Lemon Juice, and Lime Juice. And... Wow. And the last word, which is Ford's Gin, Green Chartreuse Liqueur, Luxardo Cherries, whatever. Yeah. Uh... Oh, Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Okay. Mm-hmm. Lime juice garnished with Luxardo cherries. Right. I mean, price wise, most of the stuff's fourteen fifty. The Boulevardier is sixteen fifty, and the last word is eighteen. Yeah, I think it's just because it has the gin in the Luxardo liqueur, apparently. Yeah, and Luxardo cherries. Yeah. They like charge for those. Yes. But I mean, I think it's cool that they're expanding the cocktail menus in Magic Kingdom. Because, you know. Yeah. All the other parks have it. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And it's a step. So right. that's cool. So now Skipper's, Tony's, and now Cinderella's Royal to and, I'm sorry, Liberty Square. Yeah. So I. Basically all the sit downs. Yeah. Magic Kingdom. Yeah, other than Plaza. Yeah, right. Plus, it's just like a deli, so I just don't think of it that way, right? Yeah, I mean, I know it's not a deli, but it's right. like yeah, a sandwich shop. Yes. Disenchanted costumes are on display at Walt Disney Presents. Haven't seen it yet. But I've seen the picture that comes up when you open Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. The costumes look cool. They do, yes. I wonder what happened to the costumes. The ones that they take out of there? The ones that used to be at Great Movie Ride. I don't know. Specifically, when we went to, what's the name of that restaurant? Planet Hollywood. Mm-hmm. They had Dorothy's dress on display mm-hmm. in the entry. Right. Which was at the Great Movie Ride, right? I thought it was just her shoes. Oh, maybe it was. I believe was it, it was. Was it Mary just- Poppins' dress? Wasn't there somebody's dress? I don't remember. I have to go back and look at pictures. Bob Iger closed the ride and I've, it's slipping away from my memories. Yes. 
Thanks, Iger. <laughs> but yeah, I would like to know what they do. And with that was costumes. Iger. That was not Chair Chapin. I, I would like to know what they do with those costumes. I mean, they probably go in the archives. Uh, probably. Maybe it was just the shoes. I was thinking it was the dress, but maybe you're right. Maybe no, I know, I shoes. know it was her shoes, but I thought it was Mary Poppins' umbrella. Well, I know the shoes were there, but they weren't the real shoes. They were one of the shoes. I don't think they were because they just found those shoes in like a coffee can like two years ago somewhere. Oh. Maybe, I mean, obviously there were more than one pair, but there was some big deal about they just found this pair of shoes that had been missing for 60 years or something. Oh, I do remember that. I just don't remember what it was. Yeah. Okay. The new Minnie Mouse annual pass holder magnets are starting to arrive via mail. So there's something Iger's done. <laughs> <laughs> They're mailing the magnets. Yes, they are. Which you know what that means. What? We won't get them. We've gotten the last ones. Oh, did we? Yeah. Because like for a long time, we just didn't get the ones they mailed. Yeah. The like o- they never came to us. Right. We got the Tinkerbell one really late because I actually did ask a cast member about that. But the Orange Bird ones, I don't think we ever got. I think somebody gave me one. Yeah, right. That's the one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the new Minnie Mouse one. I didn't. I didn't look to what it is. It, is it, it the looks. It's the same D, Minnie but now it's D. Minnie and it's red. That's what I figured. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure ride vehicles are being changed to bench seats. You know how they have the little dividers, so you have each of your own seat. They're taking that out. Yeah. Are those not molded plastic? I I don't know. I mean, it it feels like plastic, the moldy part of it. Yeah, I. Like now, I'm trying to remember. We haven't ridden it in a while, and I was trying to remember what they look like because if it's molded plastic, this seems like a lot of work. Nothing. Not a single picture that shows the seat. Yeah. Comes up. Hmm. Anyway, I mean, you know, that's fine. Whatever. It's not a ride that throws people around like, you know, a roller coaster or something. So it's fine. Right. The full lineup of the Disney on Broadway concert series at Epcot for the 2023 Festival of the Arts has been announced. So basically they start January 13th, mm-hmm. run through February 20th. Right. You've got Kara Lindsay from Newsies and Kevin Macy, Massey from mm-hmm. Tarzan, Ariel Jacobs from Aladdin and Adam Jacobs from Aladdin. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Patty Murren. Murren. And Robert Creighton, both from Frozen, Mandy Gonzalez from Aida, Mm -hmm. and L. Steven Taylor from The Lion King, Chrissy Simmons from The Lion King, and Josh Strickland from Tarzan. He's the guy I've seen on TV. He's good. Yes. Ashley Brown from Mary Poppins is really, really good. Right. And this other guy is Michael James Scott from Aladdin. He's really good. I would like to go to that one, one of those that they're at. Yeah. And then the one on February 20th is an ex- a special extended finale performance that features uh, Ashley Brown. Michael James Scott. Michael James Scott. Uh, whoever, Kissy, Kissy Simmons. Simmons and, and Josh Strickland. Yeah. The four of them. Right. So that's cool. Yeah. So I definitely want to see the one with. Um, and the dates are very. It's not like in a row with each of the performers. They keep alternating. On yeah, nights. like, so like the first week on the 13th, 15th, 16th, 19th, and 20th of January is Kara Lindsay from News, Newsies and Kevin Massey from Tarzan. Right. On the 14th, 17th, 18th, 21st, and 22nd is Ariel Jacobs from Aladdin and Adam Jacobs from Aladdin. And right. it kind of does that 
Which I think is good because that way if people are there two nights, they can go to two different things. Right. So I think that's kind of cool. But I definitely want to Yeah, see something the week of February 6th. Right. And. They're having the dining packages along with it as well. Yeah. They don't call it Eat to the Beat, right? They call Um, it something else. Right. I think it's. um, Well, it's Disney on Broadway, so it's something associated with that. Yeah. But they didn't. They didn't actually have a name associated with it right. when I got the information. So, uh, Akershus Beer Garden, Coral Reef, Garden Grill, La Salle, Rosen Crown, and then Regal Eagle Smokehouse yeah. and Spice Road Table. Mm-hmm. So, that's interesting. Yes. I'll get you tickets into? Into the Disney on into Broadway. Into the Disney on Broadway shows. Yes. So, that's cool. Yeah, and the packages go on sale for that December 13th is when those oh, okay. start. So two weeks. Yeah, so basically they're doing it a month ahead. Yeah. That's the first ones that will be a month from that. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ashley Brown is tremendously talented. Yes, and Michael James Scott, he's just got that very robust voice because he played he played the genie. Very robust voice. I've heard him. He's very good. Yeah. Disney Cruise Line offers special summer 2023 sailings to celebrate its silver anniversary. Yeah, 25 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and then to uh, commemorate the 25th anniversary, it's thrilled to share a new wave of special silver anniversary at sea entertainment, merchandise, Celebration experiences, the whole deal, but they're offering special cruises during summer. So they're doing more for the 25th anniversary of Cruise Line than the 40th anniversary of Epcot. I know. Like a lot more. Like Epcot, they basically were like, uh, here, here's a special presentation. Thanks. (laughs) I know. So, but there are select sailings that from May through September of 2023 that are associated with this. Yeah, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. They're also creating a brand new membership tier for Castaway Castaway Club of Pearl status after 25 cruises. Um, The Pearl members will unlock new at home and onboard benefits, which will be announced early 2023. Yeah, that's neat. I mean, they've been around long enough that people have. That people have reached that have reached that level. Right. Yeah, plus. Right. You know. So I think it's pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Um, Disney's Magnolia Golf Course is scheduled to reopen as a 14-hole course. On Monday, December 12th. So that's very weird to me. Because you have other options there. Yes. Like, if that was the only golf course at Disney, then I understand opening it as a 14-hole course. Mm-hmm. And I think the golf course has to be ready. I think it has to be the construction on the streets around it I think that's, that's causing this. I think so. But that's weird. Mm-hmm. It's just weird. And then it said in there, if you want to play 18 holes, you can yeah, play, any right. other, you know, play the other course. Right. It's just weird. Yes. Like I said, I mean, it's not weird if that's the only golf course you have. It's been closed for six or seven months. It needs to be. Mm-hmm. They need to get it reopened to get some, yeah. <sighs> to start making money on it. Yeah. But, but when you have other options... I don't know why you don't finish the other four holes. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I didn't realize that that course opened on Disney's opening day. Um, I mean, that kind of makes sense. I I know know that all children's tournament was held there for years and years. I just didn't realize that it was that the course was that age. I just, you know, it looks 50 years old. Yeah. I mean, it does. It, It looks. The layout is a 70s golf course. Right. It just surprised me Mm -hmm. when I saw that. Yeah. 
The Walt Disney Birthplace and YMCA of Metropolitan Chicago celebrates Walt Disney Day in honor of Walt's 121st birthday. Beginning at 5.30 p.m. on Monday, December 5th, guests will join in singing Happy Birthday to Walt Disney during a candlelight a candle lighting ceremony, followed by a concert of holiday songs sung by school children from Nixon Elementary. The event will take place at Walt Disney's restored childhood home. That's cool. I think it's really neat. They don't do that like at the parks? <laughs> don't know. I haven't seen anything about it. I and haven't. It just seems like, you know, Monday, shouldn't we? Like, I mean, I don't know, about 530, whatever. Right. At some point during the day, shouldn't like everybody on Main Street sing happy birthday to Walt? That'd be awesome. I think that would be very cool. Oh, you know what? They'd probably have to pay uh, royalties for using the song. Just uh-huh. kidding. <laughs> so they could have everybody uh, gather on Main Street and sing uh, one way or another in honor <laughs> of Walt because apparently they own that because it's in every Disney movie now. And every show on ABC. <laughs> Somehow they must own that song. Apparently. No, I, I think it's very cool. Yeah. I think it, it really is. Because they showed a picture of, you know, they put have Christmas decorations on it, and then they have balloons and everything. It looked really neat. Yeah. Volkskunst Clock and Craft Shop finally reopens in the Germany Pavilion. Yay. Is Toy Store open yet? Nope. So it was open for like a week as the Passholder pop-up store. Yes. It's cool though. Those cuckoo clocks are pretty amazing. Yes, they are. So on December 16th, Walt Disney or the Disney Vacation Club introduced two-factor authentication when you're logging in the memory website which involves sending a six-digit code to the cell phone or email in order to complete the login. But, in a shocking development, (laughs) it appears that the site enhancement may have introduced a bug which is currently invalidating the password portion of the login. Members can currently enter their DVC username and any random series of characters in the password field, Even if the entry doesn't match what the member's password is on file, the two-factor authentication code will be sent. Upon verification of the code, the login will successfully proceed without ever looking at the password. Now, it's just plain dumb that, first of all, that you would require this and not be ready for it. Right. Secondly... Like there's every time I sign in a new device or to one of Amazon's billion websites, Mm -hmm. I have to do this. The OTP, right. How is it that Disney is like the only major company in the world that can't figure this out? Right. And you have to do it every time you enter. And repeatedly can't figure out routine IT stuff that everyone in the world does. Like routinely can't figure out stuff that everyone in the world does. So let me give you an example. I've been sitting on this for like two weeks. Ooh, I can't wait. Yeah. Well, I mean, I told you, but I haven't shared it on the podcast, but one of the classes I'm taking, one of the teachers worked for Disney in show production. (laughs) No, this one. (laughs) So when you're performing live, in the headphones, there's a, they call it click track, like a metronome, you know, mm-hmm. keeps the beat. Okay. Which makes sense. Whether it's 80 beats a minute, 120 beats a minute, whatever it clicks. Only the drummer hears it because everybody else hears the drummer and they play off it. Right. But the drummer hears it. There is a, he didn't tell us what show, but there is a show at Disney that has a drummer live show that has been there for 
years and years, decades. A substantial amount of time. A long time. And the first 20 seconds of one of the songs has the wrong click track. So the drummer is being fed tempo for a song that doesn't match the song they're playing for the first 20 seconds of the song. And he has to figure it out his own. Right. And be close enough that when the click track kicks in, he's still within reason. Right. On the tempo of the song. Like, you know, he can't be like, and then it starts and he goes, you know, he can't do that. Right. So, but it's been like decades and they can't figure out how to do a click track on a song. So they've, (laughs) so they've allowed it to be wrong for for, years. For years. For years. Yes, years because, and years. Because they don't know how to fix it or they just don't want to? Everybody in the world knows how to fix it. <laughs> it's I'm very, just saying. It's very, very simple. Right. So. We literally did that the first week in our Pro Tools class. And there's no way that show's not being run on Pro Tools. So that's along the same lines of Disney IT. Yeah. Routine stuff that's technological that Disney can't get right. Anyway, it just blows my mind that just yeah. routine, routine, routine stuff. Well, but okay. I'm trying to understand why it's requiring it every time you log in. <laughs> really? I mean, no, it's a legitimate question. Because they can't figure out cookies. No. <laughs> like, it's the only, like, you know. I got a million different websites that will keep me logged in for 30 days or don't require it on this device again until right. I clear the cache or whatever, you know. Right. Like a million websites. And so the fact that they're doing it every time means they haven't been able to figure out cookies. <laughs> like just unbelievable. And as big as the company is, I mean, whatever. Who was CEO when, like, they started all this technology? Hmm? Who was the CEO when they started all this, you know, computer stuff in the last 20 years, I wonder? I think it was Iger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what you're telling me is things aren't going to change. No. There's one more bit of DVC news. Oh, there is. Yeah. Uh, Boulder Ridge refurbishment is still underway. It looks like about half the villas are currently being renovated and um, are actually set to open pretty soon. Mm-hmm. So half is, you know, 65, 70. There's 136 rooms. DVC rooms. Right. At Boulder Ridge. I'm excited about seeing those. uh Remodels, the refurbs. I am too. It mm-hmm. certainly needed it. Yes. So. And that's the one resort we haven't stayed at. Yeah, if you count, if you count Wilderness Lodge as one resort. Right. We have not stayed at either side. Correct. So. Eventually we will. Yeah. Just waiting for it to be redone. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know. And they have to redo them. It's in the contract. Yes. Soft goods, seven years, and right. hard goods, what, 14 years? I think so. So it has it has to be redone basically on schedule. They got away with a little bit because of... Shutdown. Yeah, COVID, but right. it has to be done. Right. So, anyway, that is it for, like, actual Disney news. Yes. Except our good friend Michael, Mike, apparently is giving two big thumbs up to the... Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special that I keep forgetting is on Disney. I know. Plus. I can't believe I haven't watched it. He's been watching it apparently on repeat. Like on loop. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we may have to watch that tonight. Um, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, your BFF. Yeah. <laughs> and and so I've been joking <clears throat> with friends of ours. That I will be unavailable Friday evening because I have a golf tea time at one o'clock, but it's actually going to be eight forty in the morning, so I might be available tomorrow night or on Friday night. 
if you know, you know. All right, so that's going to do it for news. Nope. Um, we went to Disney. We did. Just for a little bit. Like, what were we there? Like three hours or something? Like, not very long. Well, we ended up being there a little longer because um, they were having problems with the queue was running very slow. Yeah, so maybe four hours. Probably four hours. So f- we got up Friday after Thanksgiving, the mm-hmm. 20-whatever that was. Yep, 25th. Okay. And we got boarding group 30 for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind, the Christmas mix, the ride. Yes, the holiday mix, I think is what they call it. The holiday mix, okay. Yeah. We're like, cool, we'll get on and off 30, that's early. We'll get over there, get off by like 11. It was 12.30 <laughs> when we got on, when we got called it. Yes. 12.24. It was. I don't know what the problem was. was. Yeah. Um, now, when we were in there for boarding, mm-hmm. like everyone that they would load up, check everybody's lap bar, and then it would sit there. Mm-hmm. Like everyone. So I don't know what was going on. It wasn't like that day that we all wrote it. And they kept going, okay, raise your hands. Yeah. Do it again. No. Yeah, it, they raise didn't, they hands. weren't relocking us. They were just, we were sitting. You just sat there. Yeah. And it wasn't just us. It was like, you know, I everything. Don't know, how but, many did we watch leave? 10 while we were in line? Yeah. You know, they all sat there. And even the queue, there was nobody in the queue. We literally were running. No, we walked, we never stopped walking. Like for those of you who have ridden it mm-hmm. on virtual queue, not lightning lane. Right. Like, you get in the building and you wait. It may take you 45 minutes to an hour in line once your virtual queue gets called. Right. You know, right. half hour. To half an hour, hour usually. You know. Yeah. Um, there was nobody. We walked all the way to the doors. Right. In the first, before the pre-show. But it was like being in a lightning lane, like how you walk all the way right. to that room. And even the first room wasn't even full. Mm-mm. No. Uh, but then once you got in, like, the ride was just running slow for whatever reason. hmm So I heard it was something to do with the song not working right or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you this. Um, the song was not as easy to hear. As the other song, as the as regular the songs. the regular songs. Right. Like, that. that's not a technical issue. That's, like, you know. Just audio, turn yeah. the volume up, whatever. Right. But it was not as easy to hear the words and what was going on as right. it normally is. Right. Um, but it was fun. They they didn't do anything. Other than the song. Other than the song. Yeah. So I, I guess apparently at some point in it, Rocket says something about the North Pole. I looked... I've recorded the video and watched the video. There's no North Pole marked on anything or no. any of that. So it, uh, but the song's cool. It was yeah. like Run Run Rudolph, but Run Run Rocket. Allegedly, there's some other songs kind of mixed into it. They I were read. they were very hard to hear. Even listening back to it on my recording, you really just heard Run Run Rocket the whole time. Yeah. So... Not the greatest mix, or at least the volume settings. I mean, maybe it was because it was the first great. day and they were having issues. I don't know. But yeah, it definitely could be first day yeah. jitters or, you know, opening day stuff. Right. But but anyway, it was fun. Mm-hmm. The ride was, the song was cute. The ride was fantastic you know. as always. Yeah. And like I said, I, I listened to the song more when I was editing the video than I did on the ride, obviously. Right. But it was cool. And it fit, Mm -hmm. it fit the, the thrill of the ride. Yes. The feel of the ride. Yes, it did do that. And, and we'll get to do it again on Saturday. Uh, yeah, right. Guess we are. Yes. So we got there. We went to creation shop. Mm-hmm. They had some pins and shirts and 
and a yeah shirt. No spirit. pass holder specific stuff, or was Only, there? A there pen? was one pin. There was one pass holder pin. It was a pin. That's that snow globe one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and no, no party specific stuff. Obviously, not at Epcot, but right. So that I wonder how much of that is business decision for the for the sake of the decision and how much of that is because of supply chain because you know in the past even was it last year year before they had the just the projections i guess year before they had just the projections on the castle and were selling shirts for that mhm yeah because it was that red pass holder yeah yeah but yet yeah, they didn't have any pass holder clothes it was only the pass holder pin right which Surprised me. Yeah, it is. It's and even the Christmas party, they didn't have a pin for the Christmas party either. They gave away the ornament, but they didn't have the pin you could buy because right. every year they had a pin for the party. Yeah, right. So, I don't know. Right. So. So, yeah, we looked in the creation shop and the, and the stuff was cute. We did. Um, There was, we looked at something else. I can't remember. I was like, ooh, that's pretty cool. I can't remember what it was. Uh, they have a cookie jar that was like a real oh, cookie jar. Yeah, I know. That was pretty cool. Like, it just shaped like, like a, a cookie, cookie jar. jar. Yeah. Nothing fancy, you know, yeah. holiday decorations. Mm-hmm. Like, white with Christmas lights or something on it. Well, and I think that's kind of going back to that, uh, what is it, kind of the 50s, 70s. Yeah, that mid-century modern yeah. and, uh, art deco kind of mm-hmm. stuff. But also... Um, you know, the Epcot ball cookie jar has been very popular because it holds a lot of cookies. Yes. So will this one because it's not a weird shape like the castle or. Right. Right. So it was cool. We yeah. didn't get it because we don't ever have cookies, but it right. was cool. They did have one other item available for the um, Festival of the Holidays. It was a Dooney and Burke tote. Right. But it was over with the Dooney stuff, which is why. We- we right. Really yeah, not in the whole because Christmas they have to, section. Yeah, because they have to protect it because it's duty. Um, yeah, right. But it's only the one. They didn't have like several different sizes. It was just one, like a, t- it's not as big as my tote. So it's right. between a purse and a tote. Yeah. So we left there. Mm-hmm. I guess we went to Norway. Yes, to go see the um, the first show of the Barn Santa. Why do I feel like we went the other way first? We didn't go to Canada. We didn't go to Canada. We looked up the schedule and then we went towards. Yeah, I guess we just. We started to walk. We started to just kind of wander. And then we realized that the Norway show was like in seven minutes. Yeah. Okay. So we went. Then we went to Norway. Mm Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, you had a schedule and it said that the Barn Santa storyteller was getting ready to go. And right. that's my favorite one of the ones we've seen. Mm-hmm. So um, I feel like Inga or whatever her name was, was the same person as last year. But the Barn Santa was a different guy. But he was good. He was He funny. was very good. Yes. Because the Barn Santa last year interacted more with with the audience with you know with people around right. this one he was he was good he just didn't interact as much does that make sense yeah but i think part of that it was the first show too no i know but there was this guy <laughs> what last year that really no oh saturday okay that really wanted to be that guy. Oh. So like he kept kind of yelling out things during oh. the show. So I think they were like, okay, we're not going to do so much audio audience interaction because this guy is trying to take over the show almost. Oh, okay. So it was weird. I mean, you know, yeah. good for him for being enthused by it, but right, it was a little annoying. Yes. But the Barn Santa one is very cute. I like him. It is. I really like it. Mm-hmm. And it's the only one I know of that, you know, is multiple people like that. Right. We just missed um, the, Mariachi Cobre mm-hmm. 
like they were literally pulling the tape up as we walked by. Right. And they were pushing the cart with all the stuff on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but if you get a chance, the Norway barn Santa thing. So it's to the left. Like if you're facing Norway, right? it's to the left of the stave church in yes. front of where Elsa and Anna's meetup is. Mm-hmm. So it was cool. They have a little, it's kind of hidden, but they yes. have a little stage area set up mm-hmm. and, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. There were 20, 30 people watching. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. So you weren't real crowded. Right. I'm going to give Disney IT one bit of compliment on the, my Disney experience app. If you click on the holiday thing on the MDE, it takes you to, it allows you to select which park. And then if you click Epcot and it says right below it, it lists the storytellers. It will give you a list of the storytellers where they're at all of the times for each day. Yeah, that was kind of nice because in the past, we had to walk around. To where they were. Right. To see what time they were. To see what time what time they were going to be. There was a sign out front. Right. And you had to walk around to see what time they were going to be. And Never fails. what happened to us when we went to see them was we were like 15 minutes behind. Right. So every as we went around the circle, like everything was either just finished or almost finished. Mm-hmm. And then we we're going to have to wait 20 minutes for the next one. Right? Yeah. And then we'd go to the one country next to it and the same thing. You right. Know? So uh, this was good. We could actually kind of see what we wanted to do. Right. You could kind of schedule and like, oh, they're going to start, you know, starting at. What, 11.45 or whatever, 11.30. I'm like, okay, we got six minutes to get there. 11.35 was Norway. Right. Yeah. So I was like, great. And and I was glad it, it had it on there. So again, I know we were talking bad about them before, but that's mm-hmm. one good thing that they did for the festival holidays. Yeah. So. Then we left there. Mm-hmm. We went to. Uh, the Odyssey. Yeah, the Odyssey Pavilion or whatever mm-hmm. it's called. Right. Where. Where they had the Brew Wing House mm-hmm. and, the, and Ep- the Epcot Experience, that building. Right. They had Santa in there. Super cool sled. It was a beautiful sled, actually. Um, nice backdrop on not just that wall, but a couple of the other walls. Mm-hmm. With like a, a very rudimentary but light show of snow, you know, kind of projection mm-hmm. of snowflakes and flurries on it. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. And they had uh, they had put vinyl overlays on many of the tables and the windows, right? That were you know kind of holiday festive mm-hmm. themed, um, you know, not Christmas lights and yeah, almost like snowflakes, right? But it was very cool setup in there, mm-hmm. and they had the photo pass photographer, right? And they had a queue set up. So Santa Claus is on a schedule. Of come out for an hour, take a half hour break mm-hmm. all day. Right. Which is good. I mean, not an hour. No, it was great. Because he's inside, so he's in the air conditioning, which is why he can stay longer. Yeah. It was great. And mm-hmm. there were a lot of people lined up for it. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it was the first day they were open, so they had all the head people there making sure everything was set yeah, up. Yeah, there were right. a lot of a lot of Disney cast members in street clothes. Mm-hmm. Not street clothes. You know, in- the business casual, I'm a supervisor right outfits right so that was cool in fact uh i kept trying to get a picture of him without getting like other people's kids and Mm -hmm. and we were on the wrong side of the room but we kind of had to be because of where the line was and i couldn't get one and so one of the guys was like hold on and airdropped me the pictures that they had taken and put on MD, on uh, MDE. Right, from the, so, that, that were the photo pass photographer taking yeah. of Santa, so, so they were getting so I got test shots. good pictures yes. for the website, <laughs> for the <laughs> Facebook group. Yeah. So that was very cool. And they're all really nice. They're like, oh, did you notice this little thing we added? You oh, know, yeah. Like it had the little flurry in. It, it moved from wall to wall, but it was like a little, little mini like windstorm of the flurries of the... 
yeah. of the snow. No, it, so was, it was really neat. It was and, very neat. And, you know, the cast members were super friendly and because mm-hmm. we were just looking for somewhere to sit down and, you know, yeah, we wanted to get a look at Santa, but mm-hmm. we were looking for somewhere just to sit down and kill until our boarding group got called. Right. Um, and I did go ch- up and try because they had the holiday hearth, which is one of the snack areas. Right. And I had the maple roll, I think is what it is. Yeah, that looked really good. It was good. It was just, it was really weird when I was trying to figure out what was top of, on the top of it. It, it had like, um, it was a log, so it actually looked like it had a little mushroom on it, which was just really kind of funny. It, but it was supposed to be a mushroom. Let me find that picture. Mm-hmm. Like it had like grass and then a mushroom. It was good. But see that little thing. Right? So it looks like like a holly leaf. Mm-hmm. Holly leaf. And then that one standing up. Is, that's a mushroom. Yeah. And probably buttercream because mm-hmm. everything this year has buttercream. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, and it wasn't, like. it wasn't heavy. Right. And then I um, had a little flight. What was it? Raspberry inside? Yeah. Raspberry and maple. Yeah. It looked very good. Mm-hmm. It could have been shareable. I just didn't want any. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm not wasting it. <laughs> and then they had the beer flight. Which oh, was- I know why I thought we went to Canada or something. <laughs> Before Norway. We went to Sunshine Seasons. Oh, yes. And got. Bre- um, got lunch. It was breakfast time, but we oh. got Chinese food. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we need to tell them about that, how good it was. Yeah, it was for a quick service. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had teriyaki chicken, fried rice, a cherry, uh, no, chicken stir fry or teriyaki mm-hmm. chicken stir fry. Right. With fried rice. It says it comes with white rice, but she asked white or fried. Mm-hmm. Um, it was super tasty and, you know, not the best Chinese food I've had at Epcot, but, but super tasty for, you know, very whatever fresh, it was, but it was very bucks. fresh. Well, I mean, they literally were finishing cooking it when I we walked up. But um, I mean, and it, you it was, had the shrimp. I had the fry, shrimp, right? right? Yes. So it was really good. It was very good. Um, and very quick. Very. I mean, we we were the first ones to get it. We were the first people to go to that right particular booth. Yeah, and I mean, they gave you a good size portion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, it was more than enough food. Yeah. So I was very happy with that, and mm-hmm. especially for the price. Yeah. Um, and, you know, couldn't, I guess we couldn't mobile order. No, you can't mobile order. There. Didn't need to. Right. Uh, yeah. And then, so then at 1224, we, uh, got we got called for Aborting. Guardians and went and rode that and then left. Mm-hmm. But Guardians was fun. Yes. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they made the sound a little better. Yes. But I'm not going to knock them for the sound because no. it was, you know, early the first day and, and I appreciate the fact that they're trying to do stuff with the ride. Yes. You know, I really do. Like we don't get enough overlays for regular people right. that aren't at a party. Right. Um, so I appreciate that they're doing that. Oh, yeah. To a new ride. Yeah. And I'm not sure if people know, but on the cookie stroll, um, if you do the cookie stroll, and as every, as every, everyone knows, you don't have to get all the different cookies. You just need to get the five number. Yeah, you need to buy five, five cookies. Five cookies, period. Um, and then when you go to redeem, you get a pin that's a Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Mix pin. Oh, that was cool. Yes. So that's part of your redemption prize along with the, you know, redemption cookie. Yeah. So everybody should do that. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything else. I don't either. Okay. Well, let's wrap it up. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to the show this week. Um, Instagram, we are at makeyfile underscore podcast. Facebook. Uh, the the Mickey File Improvement District. Still funny every yeah. time. <laughs> uh, TikTok because I put another TikTok out. We have two now. Ooh, uh, is Mickey File underscore podcast trying to be consistent ish? 
So, yeah, we have two TikToks on the way to being TikTok stars. We'll make another one. We'll do another one. Sure. <laughs> no, we will. <laughs> it's a lot easier now that I found out you can you know, share the same thing to their Instagram. But, um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, podcast is available everywhere you can find podcasts. The best way to support the show is, you know, like, subscribe, follow, whatever it is. Uh, tell your friends, families, share it to your social media. You know, just let people know us, know about us. Yep. And uh, we would appreciate anyone who is inclined to uh, throw a review out there on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Because it does apparently, allegedly help people find us. That's always a good thing. Yeah. Um, that's all I got. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.